Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 25th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Of course, the number one news story is still the events in Ukraine, and I mentioned uh, some of the highlights uh, as far as network security is concerned already yesterday. The Wiper software is definitely something that you uh, still uh, need to be concerned about and variants of it uh, popping up. I also mentioned yesterday Cyclops Blink, the network of compromised WatchGuard routers. One thing I forgot to mention yesterday was that WatchGuard has a specific page to help you detect if you are affected and counter this particular threat. So I'll add a link to the show note, but it's really just detection.watchguard.com. So pretty easy to remember URL. And Xavier took a quick look at new domains registered with keywords like uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine. That's a trend, of course. We have seen with all kinds of disasters in the past, these domains are often used uh, for uh, various malicious purposes. Nothing outright malicious uh, so far. A big mix here of uh, different costs and such that registered domains just as the crisis uh, developed. Be careful with malware being offered on domains like this, uh, movies for download that turn out to be malware, but also, of course, uh, the occasional just uh, simple scam asking for donations for a fraudulent organization. On the other hand, internet connectivity in Ukraine does appear to be not substantially affected. There's still plenty of connectivity up there. Some of the government websites are still down. And it looks like some Russian government sites are down as well. Some of this may be caused by denial of service attacks. We have seen some reports of traffic being directed at these sites. Some of them may have also been just taken down sort of precautionary to not have them defaced. These kind of denial of service attacks are usually not requiring a lot of skills, uh, don't have a huge impact as often these sort of uh, showcase per sure sites for governments don't really serve any uh, functional uh, purpose necessarily for the functioning of the government. So for more details, uh, check out the webcast at noon Eastern on Friday. And again, a link will be in the show notes. Well, and in other news, the Cyber Security Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, did add two SABIX vulnerabilities to its lists of currently exploited vulnerabilities. The one that's in particular of concern here is uh, CVE 2022-23131. This just was patched three days ago. At least that's when uh, the advisory was last updated and it's an authentication bypass if you have SAML single sign-on enabled. Savix is often used uh, to monitor networks, also for cloud infrastructure and such. It's an open source uh, product. There are, I believe, also some uh, commercial versions or at least supported versions available. So make sure you update that in particular if you are using SAML for authentication, which probably in particular for enterprises is actually what you want to do. And sticking with one of the items that I have been mentioning a lot lately, uh, network attached storage uh, devices, Asus Store, Asus Store, not sure how you pronounce it exactly, is now also a victim of the Deadbolt ransomware that was first seen against QNAP, NASIS. Of course, there's a lot of similarity between these different network storage devices. So no big surprise to have uh, one particular exploit one particular ransomware strain in this case, take advantage of uh, vulnerabilities in multiple uh, vendors' uh, devices. This particular vulnerability has been patched, so make sure that you update and as usual, do not expose uh, these devices to the internet unless you have uh, the 7.5 bitcoins laying around that is requested here as a ransom payment. 
And if you're using a uh, Cisco Firepower appliance and uh, well, uh, probably will uh, use Cisco's Talus Secure Intelligence updates, you may need to update the certificate authority being installed in these devices. Otherwise, updates will fail after March 5th. As so often, the problem here is that the original set of authority uh, will expire, will be replaced. And of course, these uh, snort rules that you're downloading here from Cisco are digitally signed. And well, uh, your device needs to recognize the new set of authority used to sign these updates. And Checkpoint published a blog post stating that popular games, or I guess somewhat popular games in Microsoft's official store like Temple Run and Subway Surfer did contain malicious parts that attempted to take over social media accounts. When I say popular, well, 5,000 active machines worldwide doesn't really sound that terrible, but just as an Yet another warning that uh, official app stores sometimes come with malicious payloads as well. In this particular case, the affected apps are all written using the Electron platform, which is this HTML JavaScript uh, framework that, of course, makes it easier to modify some existing app and then republish it with a malicious component. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.